Hi, I'm T Ford, and you're watching Disney Channel. Fuck! Disney Channel Original Movies, the peak of cinema, where we get our best actors and actresses from. Zac Efron, Selena Gomez, Zendaya, I'm sure there are more out there. But do you know what Disney loves more than creating movie stars? Making movies about their old movies. <laughs> Which brings us to today's film, The Descendants. It follows the teenage children of classic Disney villains such as Maleficent, Cruella de Vil, Jafar, and the Evil Queen. The kids are given a chance to leave their home of an isolated island and attend school with other famous Disney heroes. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts would see this movie and be like, damn, that's like a lot of Disney crossovers happening over there. That's nuts. The movie opens with the classic fairy tale book opening and, oh, sorry, I guess it's an iPad. <sighs> you know, it, is the magic just gone? Are we only going to be able to tell fairy tale stories if we know the Wi-Fi password? Are we going to be hearing about this story and we're just going to be getting text notifications throughout it all? Oh, sorry, Billy. I know you wanted to know if the prince saves the princess, but, you know, daddy forgot to charge the iPad after watching football. Belle married her beast in front of 6,000 of their closest personal friends. Yeah, so instead of a honeymoon, Beast united all of the kingdoms and got himself elected king of the United States of Oregon. He rounded up all the villains and sidekicks, basically all the really interesting people, and he booted them off to the Isle of the Lost with a magical barrier to keep them there. Okay, so it's the United States of Oridon, which spells out USA, and we're talking about a small island that has been embargoed by the USA. This does make me ask the question, is this movie trying to talk about the relationship between the United States and Cuba? And if so, I feel like Fidel Castro should be played by Scar. That feels right, doesn't it? How is it possible that you're going to be crowned king next month? You're just a baby. He's turning 16, dear. So this is Ben, the son of Belle and the Beast, and he's actually about to become king of the land, which is a bit odd because normally you become king after that one guy dies. You know, Disney actually has a whole song about the transfer of powers. So normally that king stuff would sort of bother me, but I was so distracted by the layout of this room. Like they have a foosball table, a bed, and a workout machine on a rug. How filthy is that rug? Because I doubt the beast doesn't sweat when he works out. I've chosen my first official proclamation. I've decided that the children on the Isle of the Lost be given a chance to live here in Oridon. <laughs> The children of our sworn enemies living among us. I've already chosen them. Who are their parents? Cruella Deville, Jafar, Evil Queen, and Maleficent. What? Maleficent! She is the worst villain in the land! Dad, just hear me out here. I won't hear of it. They are guilty of unspeakable crimes. Dad, their children are innocent. You know, I. I actually sort of get what the parents are trying to say here. They're like, yeah, let some kids in, but do you have to let the kids of the extremist in first? It is sort of crazy too, because Ben is dating Sleeping Beauty's daughter, and now he's letting Maleficent, you know, the woman who tried to basically kill Sleeping Beauty and her husband. Yeah, we're gonna let that woman's daughter back into the real world. I'm just saying, I don't think your girlfriend's parents are gonna like you, Ben. So then we are introduced to these villainous teens and they do a whole song and dance about how they are some bad apples. Seeing this whole song and dance makes me think that not everyone on this island can be a Disney villain or even related to one. So like, do they send anyone who has ever committed a crime to this island? Like if you committed tax fraud, does that send you to this island? And if so, I feel like that guy's kid should be able to leave the island before the ruler of darkness's kid. So this is Mel, Maleficent's daughter and also the main character of this movie. Then we have Carlos, who is the son of Corella Deville, Jay, who is the son of Jafar and Evie, the daughter of the evil queen. They all get told that they are going to go to a new school with the good guys and they do not like this idea. You four have been chosen to go to a different school in Aradong. <laughs> 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 
But Maleficent has an evil plan for the teens to steal the fairy godmother's wand and use that magic to lift this spell that is keeping everyone on this island. Magic can't work on this island, so Maleficent gives Mel a spell book that she keeps in the freezer. <laughs> Do spells go bad if you don't keep them in the freezer? It is a bit weird to me that Maleficent keeps her all-powerful spell book in the same area that she stores ice cream, but okay. The group gets to the mainland and things start off a little rocky. You're Maleficent's daughter, aren't you? Yeah, you know what? I totally do not blame you for your mother trying to kill my parents and stuff. You know, and I totally do not blame your grandparents for inviting everyone in the whole world but my mother to their stupid christening. <laughs> Water under the bridge. Toad! <laughs> Okay, so how about a tour? You know, I think Ben just wanted some drama in his life, and he thought this would be the best way to stir the pot. Okay. Again, I don't know why he decided to bring these guys from the island. So, you guys have a lot of magic here at Oregon? Like, wands and things like that? Yeah, it exists, of course. But it's pretty much retired. Oh, okay. Why? That's like in the real world if people just decided to stop doing science. Like, ah, I see you have an infection there. Yeah, we used to have stuff that would help with that, but we stopped doing that because of uh, reasons. So later that night, the teens conjure up a plan to steal the fairy godmother's wand that is being held in a museum. The museum also has other popular fairy tale items in it. Looks like they have the beast's rose, the genie's lamp, and King Triton's... Triton. It does make me wonder, like, does this museum have messed up fairy tale items in it? Like, ah, yes, if you look to your right, you will see Captain Hook's hand that was bitten off by the crocodile. Mel then uses the spell book to get the security guard to prick his finger on the spinning wheel and he goes to sleep. But here's the problem. The last time this happened, for the person to wake up, they had to be kissed by their true love. So I hope the security guard is married because if not, Mel just put him in a coma. So they get to the wand and they actually don't have a plan to steal the wand. It's like they didn't believe in themselves to actually do all this. So Jay is just like, well, I'm gonna take this and he ends up setting off the alarm. <laughs> You know, I get that these guys are teenagers, but did they really think a weapon like the fairy godmother's wand wasn't going to be protected? Did they think it was just going to be as easy as taking a co-worker's lunch from the fridge, which also is so evil, I don't even think Maleficent would do that? Steve? Yeah, I'm calling you out here, Steve. Stop taking my freaking sandwiches. The alarm does wake up the security guard, which means his one true love was his job, and I can't tell if that's sweet or, you know, kind of sad. So after this failed attempt to try and get the wand, you would imagine that these guys would try and come up with a plan and actually figure out what they're going to do this time once they get to the wand, right? No. Yeah, no, they just sort of dick around for the better half of this movie. Like they go to school, Carlos learns how to like dogs, and Jay starts playing a lacrosse-esque game that involves shooting a ballista. Dude, I'm sorry, why is this involved in the sport? Could you imagine watching one of your friends play this sport and you're sitting there with their family cheering them on and then out of nowhere they just get impaled and die. And yeah, they're wearing padding, but those weapons kill dragons. In the sport, they actually have a designated kill zone. Put your helmet on, get out of the kill zone! How is this game played in the area that's ruled by the good guys? Get out of the kill zone! So Mel then gets into the shady scene of trying to fix girls' hair. Beware or swear, replace the old with brand new hair. Ah, oh, man, I knew that girl Mel was up to no good. What girl likes to style other girls' hairs? She's clearly a psychopath. Mel fixes this girl Jane's hair, and Jane is the daughter of the fairy godmother, so Mel tries to get more information out about the wand. Not like your mom, with her wand. 
I mean, one swoosh from that thing and you could probably have whatever features you wanted. She doesn't use the wand anymore. You know, she used magic on Cinderella, who wasn't even her real daughter. Okay, yeah, you know, she sort of has a point here. You know, I'm not expecting the fairy godmother to do, like, plastic surgery here, but I feel like you could use a little magic to make your daughter's hair look good, you know? Mal fixes one other girl's hair, and you're not gonna believe who she is. Hey guys, I'm Lonnie. My mom's Mulan. Is everyone here just related to a famous Disney character? Like, for God's sakes, Dopey has a son in this movie. Hi guys, I'm Dopey's son. Which, yeah, that means someone banged Dopey. Just gonna let that sink in for a second. Like, is there a kid out there who's like, yeah, my dad is the guy from Lilo and Stitch who always loses his ice cream? Sure, we may not be a fairy tale, but we're so important. It's just... Whoa! Now I'm cool. <laughs> they did not just do that. Keep jeans far away from these two, like, jeez. Now I'm cool. So throughout the whole movie, Ben has been, I don't want to say flirting, but vibing out with Mel and trying to gauge if she's interested or not. A little bit over the top? A little more than a little bit. <laughs> Well, so much for my first impression. <laughs> hey. Hey. How was your first day? Super. You should really think about taking this talent off the locker and into our class. I could uh, sign you up. I'll see you later, okay? And if there is anything you need, feel free to... Ask Doug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, did you like orchestrate all of this because you didn't know how to break up with Sleeping Beauty's daughter? That's the only explanation for your actions throughout this movie. That you were trying to do something that would piss off Sleeping Beauty's daughter so much that she would break up with you, and then, you know, you might be able to split a thing of uh, spaghetti and meatballs with Mel. Yeah, you're gonna do great in politics. Mel realizes during Ben's coronation to become king that the fairy godmother has to use her wand for Ben to officially become king. Why? Does the fairy godmother need to use her wand? I have no idea. They never explain it. Do you think that it's a possibility that the four of us could stand in the front row next to the fairy godmother just so we could soak up all that goodness? I wish you could. Up front, it's just me, my folks, and my girlfriend. And your girlfriend? Yeah, I'm sorry. So Mel's like, oh, you said you and your girlfriend. Yeah, that's, uh, making me think something. I think it's time that Benny Boo got himself a new girlfriend. Oh, you think this is your idea? Yeah, no. Ben's been planning this from the start. So Mel's plan to get Ben to fall in love with her is drugging him. I need a love spell. <laughs> you know, I hope you've been keeping that spell book in the freezer because I would hate to see your spells spoil. Like, you're making a love potion right now, but in the wrong temperature, this potion might turn Ben into a llama. Lucky for Mel, this does not happen, and they put a love potion in a cookie that Ben eats. So this love potion works where Ben will fall in love with the next person he sees. Mal, have you always had those little golden flecks in your eyes? <laughs> How you feeling, bro? Damn, Jay, are, are you trying to swoop Maul here? Jay's just like, yeah, this is the scene that's going to be cut from Russia and China. How you feeling, bro? I will say, this is some, like, Game of Thrones level of political maneuvering. Like, if the queen has the king under a spell, the queen is basically the ruler of this kingdom, right? So the love potion works too well, and after the school wins a big game of, like, the lacrosse game, but, you know, lacrosse with murders in it. Ben does a whole song and dance about Mel saying how much he loves her and he does this in front of the entire school. I love you, Mel. Can I mention that? <laughs> Give me a beat! Are we sure Ben's under a spell right now? Because I could see him just having a power trip and trying to, you know, humiliate Sleeping Beauty's daughter. He knows he can get away with it. Mel! All right, well, looks like everything's been going uh, according to plan here. Can't really say anything has been too unpredictable here. There you are. I have been looking for you literally everywhere. What's wrong? Ben just asked me out on... 
a date. Hold on, what? The guy that did a literal song and dance about how much he loves you and then asked you to be by his side when he becomes king, and also, let's not forget, the person you drugged so he would be in love with you, and you're surprised when he asks you out on a date? Huh? So Mal gets ready for this date and gets her own little glow up. I would say it. Not hideous. Not even close. Hideous, yeah, because you look so much different from the scene before. So on this date, they go to a magical lake and Ben hops in the water and after that, Maul can't find him. Did you seriously almost drown in a lake that is like four feet deep? Oh my god. Ben tries to dry Mel off with his Letterman jacket, even though he has two dry towels right next to him. My man, give her a towel. What are you doing? Okay, so Mel basically rules the kingdom at this point because she controls the guy who's about to become king. So does she even really need the wand at this point? Honestly, she doesn't even really need her mom now. She can just do whatever she wants. Which I'm not really sure what that is. Like, maybe she wants to figure out the secret formula to the Krabby Patty. Um, you want to break Ben's love spell? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh... That's the climax of the movie. She just gave up her power and influence, so I I think she's gonna be a good guy in the end. But we still got 34 minutes left in this baby! So it's the big coronation day. Fairy Godmother's wand is there, and Ben and Maul head there to the freaking castle or whatever together. Maul feels guilty about drugging Ben, which yeah, you, you should be. But she gives him a cupcake that will stop the love potion. Honestly, not the brightest thing to do right before someone becomes king. I hope he doesn't realize you drugged him because some Game of Thrones things might happen to you. Would you say that you're still in with that? <sighs> that you have very strong feelings for me? I mean, let's give the anti-love potion a few minutes to take effect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bro. What? This dude knew he was drugged for like days and did nothing about it. Dude, wh why did you do that? So then how long have you known? Since our first date, your spell washed away in the Enchanted Lake. So then what, you've just been faking it since then? I haven't been faking anything. Oh my god. Yes, even though everyone in the realm has warned me not to trust you guys and you've done literally nothing but confirm their worries, I still like you because... Nobody else has purple hair. Or maybe Ben's just like, yo, game respects game. I also love to emotionally manipulate people. So at the coordination, the wand comes out and they're about to make Ben king, but uh-oh, somebody takes the wand. And it may not be who you think it is. <laughs> What? The fairy godmother's kid ruins the king's coronation because she wants to use magic to make herself look pretty. I feel like you could have done that before or after, maybe not during the ceremony. So when the daughter takes the wand, she accidentally shoots a spell that ends up hitting the villain's island and destroys the barrier that's holding them there. The barrier is broken. What a major stray that ends up helping the villains. Like, this girl isn't trying to help the villains out or anything. She just took the wand, it shot a spell, and it went over a hundred miles and ended up being a critical hit. That's like blindly throwing a baseball and having it travel over a hundred miles to hit a dunk tank. But either way, Cuban cigars for everyone. Now that the barrier is broken, Maleficent tries to go out and get her revenge. You, you couldn't have just grabbed the scepter. You, you had to use magic there. I mean, it was right next to you. So Maleficent comes in and freezes everyone, but like they don't use an effect or anything. They just have the actors stand there and try and act like they're freezing, but you, you can see them moving. 
like... Come on, you couldn't put an effect there. Like, they all look like they're playing freeze tag. So the teens fight Maleficent, who turns into a dragon. <laughs> I guess that's where the special effects budget went instead of investing in freeze frame effects. So how does Mel defeat Maleficent? Through a stare off. Yeah, sorry there, Aladdin, Mulan, Little Mermaid, and all the other Disney movies. This is how you film a climax. But if you had asked me at the start of the movie how I thought it was gonna end, I probably would have said I thought Ben's gonna negotiate with Ursula trying to prevent missiles going to the villain's island. All right, so the stare-off leads to Maleficent turning into a lizard. Sure. So they save everyone, and then the fairy godmother scolds her daughter. I love you. But you are on a major timeout. Uh, it seems like a bit of an undersell for almost causing the whole kingdom to fall into darkness, but yeah, sure, a timeout works too. And the movie ends with everyone being happy and doing a big song and dance. Maul does not give Ben a kiss, and that pisses him off so much that he enables Puri Manocta, so watch out there, ladies. If you do not know what Puri Manocta is, it is a, um... Interesting Google search. But that's where this video ends. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, all the YouTube things, and I will catch you on the next one.